Kenyans are overtaxed and they're overtaxed and people tend to think that you can run a government just through taxation. When Moi left, Kenya had practically no debt. You understand? The, 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 the basket, the distribution of wealth across the country, you didn't have a lot of poverty. When Kibaki came, they extended the tax base. All right? Now, the extension of the tax base and liberalization of the economy is what created uh, the, the infrastructure, the ability to borrow more money, you understand? So you see more money flowing in the economy. But this money was only being handled by a few. And then liberalization of the economy created the Motumba culture. Now you've got a lot more second hand clothes, people dressing more well through second hand clothes. People think they've got a better life. But today, on average, you have more poor people. So this thing of Kibaki and economics is a lie. <laughs> you understand? It is a lie. You need to compare what, what you call the living index during Kenyatta's time, during Moi's time, Moi's time during Kibaki's time. It, in Kibaki's time, you had a lot more money in circulation, but how many people were touching that money? The mere fact that you created four or five billionaires and you created another 50 uh, <laughs> people who are starving doesn't make the economy better. Mm. In general, there are many uh, parameters that the government must look at uh, when they want to uh, improve the economy. Number one is stability and governance. If you don't have a stable environment, you can't attract investment, whether that is uh, be that local investment or, in, or, or foreign investment. Investors would prefer predictability and stability to come. Uh, to come in. And now the second thing is, of course, in terms of governance, the, 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 the structures of, of, of the entire government system must work without corruption. If you have a system that is uh, bedeviled with corruption, you can't improve the economy. You know, so, so you, you have a lot of pilverage. This one. Number two, uh, the government must really look into the best formula for creating a skilled workforce. That's also dependent. I mean, you <coughs> major investors will not come to a country where there are no skills, where there's no skilled workforce. One of the things that I think that they need to rectify in Kenya is that there's a general assumption that even if you go to universities on top of boardings and lodgings, you get a degree, a simple paper, you, you are graduate, you get a job. This doesn't work like that. The government needs to have a program for creation of vocational training institutions across the country. There must be a, a, a requirement for county governments to have a vocational training, at least one or two in each county, you know, so that you have local skills, you know, which, 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 which are relevant and applicable to, 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 to the country. Only through that would you be able to attract investments in the county and overall in the, in the nation. It's not just uh, licensing all crazy universities that issue, churn out papers uh, in, in, in the context of, um, of, of uh, for-profit education. So you get gullible people from the village thinking, if I go to Nairobi and I get uh, a degree in whatever it is, air pollution or climate change, I will get a job. <laughs> Nobody will give you a job on that. You understand? You're not contributing anything to the economy. So that's that's one thing. I think work, skilled workforce, that's, that, that, that's important. And, and, and in overall, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, and of course, the, 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 the matter of health care and food production, you know, we, we, we have neglected that. There is just no way that you walk into, into supermarkets in Nairobi and you find half of, the, half of the grocery, half of the food is imported. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous, you know. You know, you go to Quick Mart, you go to Food Plus and any other. I'm not, not targeting these particular ones, but uh, there is quite a bit of imported food in Kenya. Oranges are imported, mangoes are imported, bananas are imported, <laughs> avocados are imported, <laughs> eggs are imported. I mean, the government must stop that. We need to create legislation that bars importation of those commodities that can be abundantly produced, 
you know uh, it was it was in Malawi or Ma Malawi I think so when uh, where they used to go angry for a long time and the new president came and changed and said no we're going to be produce we're going to produce food and now they have more surplus than before Kenya has got a lot of fertile land a lot of fertile land even the most arid parts of Kenya can be irrigated you know so we have no reason to import food i mean you, you it's just you drive across the highways in Kenya and make stopovers in all these uh, uh, petrol stations and they have all these small mini supermarkets and you walk in and most of the food is imported. You know, it's, 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 it's painful. How can you buy uh, imported uh, dried um, tomatoes in Rift Valley <laughs> from, from, I don't know, Egypt or from Jordanian or something like that? And, and, and all people are very happy to buy because it's imported. And they don't realize that actually that imported food might be of the most poorest quality. And, and no wonder we get a lot of diseases, cancer, and all that. So that's, that's, that's an area that the government should focus on, both the government and the opposition, because these are not matters that, that only favors one side of the government, it favors the whole community. And anything that favors the whole country should be supported by both sides. You know, the, the mass politics, uh, we, we need to reform our electoral democracy to, 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 to prioritize national interest, not just competitive politics, right? So that's one area. Another thing is also health care. We should not look at, 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 at health care as a source of revenue. You know, you can't play with human lives. We have a lot of doctors in this country who are who are who are qualified but unemployed. You know, you have very many sectors, uh, say, say, you know, very many uh, sectors of, of, of healthcare that require licensing. So uh, somebody's gone to university, the university qualified that person as doctor, yeah, but they're still, you know, you need two years to to, to get a license before you can practice. And you don't, and then you don't have a job, so you can practice. I mean, these people can do what you call, uh, you, you know, the, you know, they can offer medical services before. I mean, anybody that is trained uh, as a doctor with a stethoscope that can put up in his village a small clinic to at least do the first, <laughs> you know, uh, what, what do you call it, first step medical aid to know that this person is suffering this and that that go by this or right or not be taken to this referral hospital you know in that way you you you, you remove clogging in 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 hospitals but now you have i hear there are more than three thousand doctors that are are, are, are are not employed and not practicing <laughs> in a country where medicare is a problem so it's not just uh, the ability to pay for nhif or nhif to do this da, 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 da. It's not just reformation of institutions that dispense uh, Medicare insurance, but also Medicare at the, at the grassroots level. You have now, Kenya is very huge in, 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 uh, on, on, on social media. You have a lot of cases of mental health. But you see, the, the, the licensing of psychologists, mental health professionals, or even over streamlining of that department, it's not that. You know? And apparently, it's frustrated because you have psychiatrists that do not want psychologists to be licensed, but you know, the psychologists are the ones that will be able to provide a first aid uh, mental health care. You understand? So they are, they are told you have to wait 10 years to be able to do an assessment after university or something like that. Doesn't make sense. So I think there's a lot of things that, that we need. Infrastructure, we've done pretty well on, on, on that area, I think needs improvement of course there are still other areas in the country regions where they've never seen a tarmac road so so infrastructure improvement should con be ongoing uh, uh, you travel widely uh, maybe kenyans are overtaxed and they're overtaxed and people tend to think that you can run a government just through taxation if you overtax people they don't have disposable income if they don't have disposable income then they can't invest. If they can't invest, they can't create wealth. If they can't create wealth, the society can't. Then you have more, the more you tax, the less and less people you have to, to tax. <laughs> so you need to lower the tax and create disposable income so that 
you create uh, a bigger pool of taxable people, but uh, 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 you know, minimal tax. You know, at, at least not, not necessarily minimal, but uh, uh, adic you know, what is commensurate with their earnings. So I think the taxation system as it is is prohibitive. Another thing, of course, also is the loan, the, the cost of of money, the cost of credit, the cost of loans. You know, you have predatory lending institutions in Kenya and, and uh, which behave like a towel. I mean you have the, the, the all this digital lending platform I don't know, and the other ones from the, from the mobile money and, and all of you. They are uh, it's it's like uh, they've created a system in which uh, the citizens are just sucked uh, you know are milked uh, without <laughs> without anything going on. So I think uh yeah, yeah, we need improvements in those areas, eh? education, health, uh, financial inclusion, wealth creation, infrastructure, uh, stability and governance, and, 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 and food production. So if you have all those, 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 those areas adequately attended to and, 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 and satisfied, I think we should be able to see a, a, a good working economy. And then lastly, uh, I will say this, maybe some people might find it very, very controversial, but you see, there is no history, there's no recorded history in the history of mankind where any nation has improved from poverty to prosperity in electoral democracy. None. And the reason why we have a lot of uh, governance problem, corruption problem, and all that is because in an electoral democracy in a poor country, elections only serve to get people for a term in which they can rob the country to prepare for the next term. So you get a circle of poverty created by what you call democracy. <laughs> so I think we need to, 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 to review the system. Today what we have is a system that reviews uh, uh, that basically filters who gets to be corrupt in the next five years. <laughs> you understand? Who gets to rob the country? Who gets to do what the next five years? Be they in the position. So we need to think twice. Uh, I will say this on TV that the repeal of Section 2A the way it was done is probably the biggest cause of our problems. If we had left Kanu, reformed Kanu, and made Kanu more democratic, and extended it across the grassroots, creating a machinery that helped people to develop, and today, after 40 years of Kanu, we would be very far. All right? Nobody is going to eat the right to pick it tonight. <laughs> you know that? There's no food that you're going to eat anybody in the Republic of Kenya that is going to put food on the table which has been produced on the basis of the right to pick it, the right to abuse, the right to insult. Uh, last question, mm. uh, Banatom. Mm. No, there's, no there's, this is the biggest lie. The biggest lie. When Moi left, Kenya had practically no debt. You understand? The, 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 the basket, the distribution of wealth across the country, you didn't have a lot of poverty. When Kibaki came, they extended the tax base. All right? Now, the extension of the tax base and liberalization of the economy is what created uh, the, the infrastructure, the ability to borrow more money, you understand? So you see more money flowing in the economy. But this money was only being handled by a few. And then liberalization of the economy created the Mutumba culture. Now you've got a lot more second-hand clothes, people dressing more well through second-hand clothes. People think they've got a better life. But today, on average, you have more poor people. So this thing of Kibaki and economics is a lie. <laughs> you understand? It is a lie. You need to compare what, what you call the living index during Kenyatta's time during Moe's time, time, during Kibaki's time, 
it, in Kibaki's time, you had a lot more money in circulation, but how many people were touching that money? The mere fact that you created four or five billionaires and you created another 50 uh, <laughs> people who are starving doesn't make the economy better. The economy should be able to satisfy everybody. You know what I'm saying? A lot of billionaires were certainly created during, uh, during Kibaki's time because a lot of money was also collected and there was a lot of pilferage. So if you're in Nairobi, in the upper, you know, if you're people that are working in, in, in government uh, position, of course they got wealthy. But did that translate to the poor getting wealthy? No, they got poorer. <laughs> so we are not there yet. There must be a fundamental economic reform. And that's only possible if we also fundamentally if we fundamentally uh, change our governance and political system. And for the first time, like, uh, we are doing poorer than... A lot. Not just Kenya. You know, when the East African community benefits, when Uganda benefits, when Tanzania benefits, when Congo benefits, when you create structures that actually enable free trade across this country, we are such a big population. If you combine the population of Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, Congo, and now Somalia and South Sudan, and eventually Ethiopia. That's huge. That's huge. It's over 300 million people. It's a huge market. It means if, you, if, you, if you're producing these avocados, you lose a market. You don't have to worry that somebody is going to export them. So when you, while you're doing that, while you're collapsing the borders, you also have to create infrastructure to enable the movement of goods. You know, so those are two things. Skilled workforce, infrastructure for movement of goods, and focus on local consumption and satisfaction. Thank you.